When people first find out they have a food intolerance, or they make the decision to restrict their diet, often the first thing they miss is desserts. And perhaps that's why a lot of the recipe books focus on your desserts. But what happens when you're cooking for a family? That's why we decided to do an episode based on your family favourites. Welcome to the lasagna episode. making a lasagna without beef. You don't get guns like these without beef. Then again, I think Popeye did it with spinach. Hi, today we're going to be making a dairy-free lasagna. So we're going to start off with the corn mince. 300 grams, this is straight out of the freezer from the supermarket. We've also got some organic tofu. Now this is if you don't like uh, the corn mince. The corn mince does have rehydrated egg in it. So if you're allergic to eggs, then uh, definitely take the tofu option. But one or the other, it's up to you. Or if you feel like mixing and matching, absolutely go for it. And to be using some tomato paste with our corn mince. Again, if you like a specific type of bolognese sauce, please get that one. Fresh herbs, I'm gonna be using some basil and some flat leaf parsley. If you're using fresh herbs, it's great to give them a bit of a chop or a bruise because that helps to release the flavors of the herbs. If you're using dried herbs, which are absolutely fine, Give them a bit of a bruise in a pestle and mortar, or if you don't have a pestle and mortar, just give them a bit of a, a go over with a rolling pin. A little bit of salt and pepper, that's uh, again up to you, depending on how you like it. I'm going to add about 500 mils of water. What we're wanting to do is we're wanting this sauce to be bubbling on the stove for about half an hour. Also, we want this to be a little bit runny. That way it helps to soften the lasagna in the oven. While the sauce is bubbling on the stove, we're going to make a spinach and cream cheese layer. Now I'm using the tofuti because it's great. I love it. And uh, being the dairy-free option. So again, you can use fresh spinach or the frozen spinach. I'm using the frozen spinach today. Just pop it into the food processor. Add the tofuti. You don't have to blend it. You can just mix it all together with a fork if you like. I prefer to blend it, make it nice and smooth. It doesn't take long, it's just a really quick blend. And as you can see, it looks great. Okay, so now that the mince mixture has been on the stove for about 25 minutes, the spinach and cream cheese is all whizzed up and ready to go. We've got our lasagna sheets, it's time to put it together. What I want to do with the layers is I want to put the mince down the bottom, then some lasagna on top, then a layer of the spinach, then lasagna, then the meat, lasagna, spinach. So you'll get three layers from this amount of mince and two layers from the spinach. We're going to be using some mozzarella style cheese. This is a dairy free cheese that actually melts because a lot of dairy free cheeses don't melt. If you can make sure that every layer is completely covered, the lasagna will cook faster. It won't be dry when you start to eat it. It'll be nice and moist and the flavors will blend together. It will be legendary without the dairy. That goes in the oven. 200 degrees to start off with for about 15 minutes and then reduce to 150 degrees for another 10 minutes. Then if you can turn the oven off, let it sit for 10 minutes, it'll be fantastic. And there you have it, dairy free, vegetarian, very quick lasagna. Pretty sure Lisa's is making a bechamel sauce without butter. Karina, where's my rice milk gone? Today I'm doing a really simple tomato sauce. So you put in your tomato base. So you could be using fresh tomatoes that you've pureed through a mule yourself. I see a bolognese sauce as an opportunity to put lots of vegetables in. So I'm adding lots of zucchini, lots of mushroom, 
lots of capsicum for a bit more sweetness, basil and some olive oil here and I've also got a little bit of rapadura sugar and the rapadura sugar is basically the sugar cane juice which is dried. If you want a little bit of um, protein or a little bit of meatiness in your sauce you've got a whole lot of options. The easiest option is to add uh, red kidney beans. The other things you could use would be various grains so you could blend up some brown rice which has been cooked, you could use lentils, so there's a whole lot of options so have a look, have a play and see what suits your taste buds. Okay so pop that on the stove, give it a good stir, put the lid on and leave it on for at least an hour and a half. Okay so the key thing I'm really showing you today is how to make a creamy bechamel sauce when you're not using butter or flour which is the two main ingredients of a bechamel sauce. Okay so for the fatty base I'm just using olive oil instead of butter. I'm going to be using a gluten free flour. There are lots of alternatives on the market. I like this one because it's free of all the foods that I'm avoiding in this recipe for you. I'm going to be using rice milk. Okay, so come over to the stove top with me and we'll get the sauce going. Okay, so you really want your sauce beginning to look like that. If it goes all dry and clumpy, then you need to start again because if you start adding your milk to that, you're just gonna get lots of lumps. Stir this continuously. Okay, so I've taken it off the heat while we add the milk. I've got about 500 mils here. In order to get the milk really combining with your paste that you've just made, you need to add it slowly and you need to keep stirring. So 50 mils at a time to begin with until it's all blended in. And then you add another 50 mils. You don't want any lumps. Now's the time to get rid of lumps and to make it smooth. Okay, so you need to be stirring continuously until it comes to the boil and then let it simmer for three minutes again, stirring continuously through that time. Once you've done that, then you can take it off the heat. Okay, we're about to assemble the lasagna. Now, my handy hint here is the more vegetables you can pack into your sauce, the better, because it will give you some more space in between your pasta sheets. So today, because I'm avoiding gluten, soy, dairy and egg, we wanted to make sure that we found a pasta which does avoid all of that. So I've been using the all grain ones because they're actually free of all those ingredients and these particular ones are made of rice and corn. First of all, we're just going to pour some of the sauce on the bottom of the dish. If you're using lasagna sheets like this, make sure you're packing them in nice and tightly because that will give your final lasagna a lot more structure. And then some more of the sauce, followed by a drizzle of the bechamel style sauce. Now just repeat this process until you've used up all of your ingredients. And I like to leave a generous amount of the bechamel style sauce to put on top because then it gives your lasagna a more creamier look and taste. Okay, so now it's time to pop it in the oven for 50 minutes. I'm going to keep it covered with foil for about half an hour to 40 minutes. And then I'm gonna take the foil off so that the top can brown. Okay, so here's your almost everything free lasagna. So we're just going to let it stand and then it's time to serve and eat. Hayley's the baby of the group. We still don't let her use a real oven. It's ready! Still raw. Let's see how she made it. Today for my raw vegan lasagna, I'm going to be using zucchini slices as a pasta alternative, as well as a walnut mince and a cashew cheese. To get started, I'm just going to slice my zucchini really finely. The best way to do that is to use a mandolin slicer, and you can find these in any good department stores. Now I'm just going to slice them in half again. That way they're not too big when we assemble the lasagna. I've also got some baby spinach, which I'm marinating in some olive oil and Himalayan salt. So I'm just gonna let that sit there while we get on with the rest of the lasagna. So now I'm just gonna blend all these ingredients to make the raw tomato sauce. It's really easy. Now I'm just gonna add the chopped tomato to the Vitamix. And some sun-dried tomatoes, which I've had soaking in water for an hour. Some extra virgin olive oil. A pitted medjool date, just to add a bit of sweetness, clove of garlic with some flavour, and some oregano. And lastly, the juice of a lemon. 
Now I'm going to blitz it all up until the sauce is nice and smooth. That looks perfect. Now we're going to get started with the meatless walnut mints. I like to use a food processor for dry mixes like this. And I'm just going to add my walnuts, which I've had soaking for six hours. Sun-dried tomatoes, which I've had soaking for an hour. Some extra virgin olive oil. Some dark miso paste. Some tamari, which is a soy sauce alternative. Some oregano and sage. And some coconut sugar, just to balance out the saltiness. So now I'm just going to blitz it all up. So this is what we're after, a nice chunky consistency. So now I'm going to get started with the dairy-free cashew cheese. Like everything else, it's really simple. I'm just going to throw everything into the blender. Got some soaked cashews. They've been soaking for six hours. Some savoury yeast flakes. That's just going to add a cheesy flavour. A pinch of Himalayan salt. Some parsley. Juice of half a lemon. A little bit of water just to get everything moving. So I'm just going to blend that up until everything's nice and smooth. This is still a bit thick. I'm just going to add a bit more water. That's a lot better. Nice and smooth and creamy, just the way we want it. So now I'm just going to put all the layers together. I'm going to start off with the zucchini slices. Then I'm going to layer them with some walnut mint. Next, I'm going to put some cashew cheese on top and then some tomato sauce. And I'm going to top that off with some marinated spinach leaves. And now we're ready for the next layer. Top tip. To prevent the lasagna from falling apart, alternate the direction of the zucchini slices for each layer. And there you have it, a delicious raw vegan lasagna. Next up, we've got Glenis making lasagna. I'm just hopping around in the kitchen chopping some tomatoes. No, no, no tomatoes. No tomatoes in a lasagna? Let's get going making this whole food lasagna. We're going to use a red sauce without any tomato. Instead of lasagna sheets, we're going to be using aubergine, or you may know it as eggplant. Alternatively, you could use zucchini like Hayley's done in her recipe or you could use sweet potato or in fact any other firm vegetable of your choice. To get consistency with our slices, I'm going to use a mandolin cutter. Place them in a colander over a pot and in between each layer place some Himalayan salt. The water will drain from the colander which is taking the bitterness out of the eggplant. These have been sitting for about two hours and as you can see some of the liquid has been drawn out. Rinse off the salt, place them on some paper towels and pat them dry. We're just going to fry them off now, one to two minutes each side. That's lovely, this is just how we want it to look. So how are we going to make this no tomato, tomato sauce for the lasagna? Well, the secret is beetroot. It is a little bit different, but it's delicious. And it's so simple to make. We're just going to put all our ingredients, except the beetroot, into a high-powered blender. So we're going to pop in some onions and some garlic, olive oil, our kumra, some carrot, lemon rind. Now that smells gorgeous. Lemon juice, salt and pepper, vegetarian stock cube, and water, keeping about half of our water for reserve. And simply blend. This consistency looks right, so now we will add half of our beetroot and whiz it up again in the blender to check the color. This is a little bit orange. I'm gonna add the rest of the beetroot to darken up the color a little more. This colour is perfect. If you don't have one of these high speed blenders that cooks, you could alternatively make it on the stove by placing all your ingredients in a pot, just like making a soup, and then when all the vegetables are softened sufficiently, blend it in the pot. Today I'm going to finish the sauce off in the pot. As it cooks, it will deepen in colour. 
So I'm going to cook this on the stove top for about 20 minutes and the consistency is a little thick so I'm going to add our reserved water. This is perfect. Look how the colour has deepened and now we're going to set this aside while we get the rest of the recipe together. Lastly, we need to make our cheese sauce alternative. I'm going to use cashews. If cashews are not any good for your diet, try Lisa's or Anne's cheesy alternatives. This recipe is simple to make. Again, we just put everything except the water into our blender and blend it up. I've soaked these cashews for four to six hours and that is what's going to give the cheese its creaminess. Our nutritional yeast is going to give it a cheesy flavour, some apple cider vinegar, turmeric for colour, some salt and pepper and a squeeze of lemon juice. This is a great consistency for a ricotta style cheese but I want a creamy sauce that I can spread on top of the lasagna so I'm going to add some more water to get this effect. This is a great consistency for the sauce cheese. It wants to come off the spoon but it just hangs there. For our vegetarian lasagna I've added some more vegetables. I've mandolin sliced some sweet potato and some zucchini and pop them on a tray and bake them for 15 minutes until they're nice and soft. I've also sliced some mushrooms and I've caramelized some red onions as well. And now for the fun part, let's assemble our lasagna. To start our lasagna, we're going to add just a little bit of sauce to the bottom of our baking dish so our lasagna doesn't stick to the bottom. Add a layer of aubergine and then layer some mushrooms and sweet potato, zucchini, some onions and add a generous amount of sauce. Look how red that is. And then our ricotta style creamy cheese. Let's do this layering all over again until we've used up all our ingredients. We're ready to bake our lasagna in an oven at 180 degrees for 40 minutes with some foil on the top. After 40 minutes, take the foil off and bake it for another 10 to 15 minutes until it's a golden brown colour on the top. Take it out and rest it for 5 to 10 minutes before serving. And there you have it, a delicious vegetarian whole food lasagna made with no tomatoes. Before we give the lasagna to the experts, we thought we'd road test them on someone who doesn't have a food intolerance. So for those of you who follow AFL, our next guest needs no introduction. Former AFL player, senior coach for Melbourne Football Club for over 10 years, Neil Danaher. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Neil, I understand that um, you haven't suffered from any food intolerances yourself personally. Um, that's right, but my wife and my daughter, they've got allergy to egg and uh, my father-in-law is allergic to fish. You've got to be really careful at home, but more so when you go out. Mm, absolutely. All right, Neil, so we've got some lasagnas for you to try. Are you ready to tuck in? Love lasagnas. Excellent. So this is Anne's lasagna. Well, let's see what a dairy-free one's like because uh, most of them are. Look at that. Looks good. Very nice. He's going back for seconds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, Neil. So next up we have Lisa's lasagna. What do you think? Beautiful. Beautiful. Delicious. I reckon our team would eat this and can polish it off very quickly. Mm. Nice and creamy. So this is Ailey's lasagna. Sorry. I look like a judge, do I? Is that the <laughs> judge? That was very nice. Very nice. And it's not heated, and uh, it's quite refreshing. Excellent. Hayley, I think that's a tick of approval. All right, last but certainly not least, we have Glennis's lasagna. Looks very nice. Let's see what it tastes like. Mm. It's lovely, isn't it? That's think, amazing, Glennis. I think that's my favourite. <laughs> we don't choose favourites here. <laughs> <laughs> So there you have it, 
four very different lasagnas all given a thumbs up. And now it's your turn. Let us know what you think. Do you want to know more and see what the girls are up to tackling next week? Then head on over to the website and make sure you fill in your details and sign up for the newsletter. I've peeked ahead and I can tell you there are some really exciting things coming up. So stay tuned next week for more Alternative Chef. So Neil gave the lasagna the thumbs up. Let's see what the professionals think. Let's, oh, let's, let's try, try it. it. Let's try it. Bon appetit. Bon appetit. Hey. Bon appetit. Oh, bon appetit. Oh. Yeah. Look at me. You usually have, there's different types of chefs. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you have to learn it all. <laughs> Just because I'm less Look at this. Yes. Look at this. And mm. I think that's carrot, is it not? Mm -hmm. That's delicious. Very tasty. What sort of flour is that? Just the all green, gluten free all purpose right. flour. Mm. In the rice milk. Beautiful. Mm. That oh, looks yeah, lovely too, doesn't it? Oh, gorgeous. Beautiful. Um, it's a cashew. Cashew cheese. cheese. And I use um, basil and garlic. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's very refreshing. Mm. Mm. It's very refreshing. Mm. So, do you reckon you'll try some of these recipes? Mm. I like this. Yeah. I like it very much, but I haven't, I didn't know about the products. Mm. Yeah, it's delicious actually. I love it. It's mm. really nice. Mm.